everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we have a very special episode of our show. That's true. It's the 20th episode, so we have an anniversary today. And we put on the Christmas hats because it's also Christmas, right? Uh, and so that's awesome. I'm Rasmus. And, and I'm Sherry. And we are your hosts for this special episode of Dev Show. So um, before I hand it back over to Rasmus that tell us that what we are going to do today, I wanted to mention uh, to all of you that we have uh, our code of conduct on our main meetup page. Uh, we really recommend you to familiarize yourself with that one. Uh, but in short, just be nice and mindful of the others. And uh, if you have any question from our speaker, please make sure that to, to type it there. So back to you, Osmus. Yeah. So most of you have probably seen the title of this session, maybe a video of the speaker today. So the title is uh, how to control a coffee machine with your brain. But we, we're going to... We're gonna see much more. So, so we have been promised by Vasim to see, kind of, I would call it a device show off. So, so look at all the devices, all the IoT things that that uh, that Vasim has at his home, and then of course we also gonna see and talk more about uh, the mind controlled coffee machine and the Notion two headset that he's actually using uh, using to to kind of control the coffee machine. So, Sherry, talking about all devices and IoT things, you were talking about some prices earlier today when we had the prep call. Yes, to make everything be more festive, uh, we have we have few prizes for all of you. How to get that? Use our hashtag, which is Dev Show, and let us know that what is your favorite IoT device, and if you have built anything with that so far we are going to control uh not control just check that hashtag on on uh, linkedin and twitter uh and then yeah and then we are going to contact uh three of you and if you can put in your iot device with a brain control device that's gonna be awesome right so you can yes, control your hashtag that is very true yes so and uh, now I guess it's time to have our speaker on the stage. So our speaker today is uh, Vasim. Hi, Vasim. Hi. <laughs> so uh, I know Vasim uh, for a few years. Uh, we know each other from Angular community. And, uh, and many of you might already uh, know him on, on Twitter or on the, in the community. Or maybe you have used some of the libraries that that he he's created on the open source because he's creating many library, including uh, um, that um, one of actually one of the library that you created. It is a Bluetooth library for Angular that I mm -hmm. use it as well. Yeah, you have X layer, you have N N uh, N X tools, N G X tools. You mean probably? Yeah, we, yeah. we can't hear you actually. Your volume is slightly... yeah, uh, ngx tools. Yes, ngx. Okay, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, ngx tools and and many more. Um, and um, one thing I also know about you that you you like to learn to produce music. That's true. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying actually. Um, I I I love music. I mean, um, you know, it helps my creativity. So I listen to music a lot, and I just really like started like a couple of months back, probably a year or so, to trying to learn actually the uh, you know the theory behind music, mm -hmm. um, electronic music to be precise, and uh, oh, it's, it's a long great. journey actually. Um, I'm still trying to learn. <laughs> oh, I mean, great. I can I can for sure I can make noise, but it's not music <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can I can tell you that my mom uh, is a music teacher, and she oh. kind of that she dreamed of having a daughter that he can play some music. <laughs> so all my childhood, I've been to a lot of different courses to to learn the playing violin, playing piano, you name it, everything. The theory of the music, nothing happened. But at <laughs> least my brother is a musician today, so that's good. Oh, interesting. So. 
So, Sherry, I hear when we have the 30th episode of the Dev Show, then you're going to play violin, or is that going to be... Oh, definitely not violin. Maybe I can make some <laughs> bitter noises with piano or guitar. But <laughs> we'll hold, hold you up on that. Together. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, great. So, how are we going to start it with him? Are you going to show us the some of the devices that you have? Oh. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I already actually set up my other phone. So, okay. um, can you can you can you share it? Maybe do you, do you see it on the definitely backstage? Yes. So I will have actually to mute this microphone and use the other one. You know, in order to avoid echo. Yeah. So please bear with me. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So, what is the better way to start out this show than? seeing all the devices so so kind of building the foundation so yeah, yeah look yeah. at that so let's make it full screen there yeah, yeah. that's a good idea sherry let's move on you, you hear me from this phone? yes yes cool <laughs> so so this is gonna be actually this is the coffee machine uh, i'm using and actually i've been using for the last two or three years to drink my coffee and brew my coffee um, and this, these are actually some of the um, devices that I've um, been uh, using to you know, have fun, mainly. So I'm probably going to start with this one. This is the, the, the Matrix by, um, yeah, by a company called Matrix. It's actually um, a board with so many um, sensors and microphones. So you can, you know, plug it on a Raspberry Pi and they have a Python SDK that you can use, you know, to... Um, you know, for uh, and like use it in uh, some interesting projects. Um, mm -hmm. I basically just been using it to uh, learn actually about electronic and um, <clears throat> how to uh, you know uh, control GPIOs and everything. Mm -hmm. um, this is yeah. This is this is an MX chip by uh, by Azure. Yeah, you can use it to plug it to your Azure uh, IoT uh, hub. Um, these are all <laughs> Raspberry Pis, um, which I use for different reasons. This one, actually, I had to disconnect it just to show it to you guys. This has a um, Pi Hole installed on it. Pi Hole is a software that allows you actually to block, um, you know, ads <laughs> for oh. for your whole, yeah, your whole house. So it acts as a DNS server, and then basically just set up your... Um, you know your uh, local router mm -hmm. to use it, and then all the all the devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi would actually benefit from uh, not having ads showed on their web pages. Um, the rest here, this is this uh, this is the dongle from Nordic. This is the BLE dongle. Um, oh, I one of that. <laughs> yeah, these are really great. Actually, this one in I think it's um. Um, Lars, who gave it to me? Same here. <laughs> <laughs> NG Vikings. Um, this is the Ubertooth device, which is basically a, a sniffer for uh, you know Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And actually, mm -hmm. that's the one I use to sniff the Bluetooth packets for the coffee machine. Um, here are a set of uh, Omega Onions boards, basically mm -hmm. like you know small computers with the uh, wi-fi uh they, yeah, they can they could run in and it's like linux they could run anything you want uh they all have no js installed on them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um the, the all the others here are basically just you know um um sensors and uh, uh you know uh, displays that i use with other boards this is arduino here a set of nordic Thingy 52 devices, which are which are um, Bluetooth low energy enabled. So basically, they have lots of uh, sensors that you can use, um, gyroscopes, uh, humidity, all the stuff, you know, to make. Uh, That's exactly. I use your library to to connect to those. To be honest. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I use that actually to build the library. I I trained them. I mean, I I use this one to debug the library. Mm -hmm. Um. Angular one over there as well. Which one? This the one. Angular one. Yeah. yeah. 
This is courtesy from Uri Shekid, my friend. He actually made these ones. They he made like a couple of them. Uh, these are these are uh, Bluetooth low energy badges that like they 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 are broadcasting some some URL that you can actually uh, take with you on conference so people can connect with you. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> um, here behind, I have this. Actually, I, I haven't opened them yet. I just got them from Kickstarter. This these are made by Switchbot, the company, and these are actually for my curtains. <laughs> I need to install them to be able to control my curtains using uh, using their mobile app. Um, so when, you are, when you are, for example, very sleepy in the morning, and you don't want to have sun in your face, you can just with command. For instance, yeah, or or the evening while you're going to bed, just like close all the windows. Yeah. Um, this is by the same company, Switchpod. is actually a um, switch, like uh, like you can see it like a finger. You can you know, like stick it anywhere you want, and it would allow you to push any button. Actually, <laughs> um, it, it's Bluetooth enabled as well, and this is a device that you could use to uh, record. Uh, you could record. Uh, um, infrared uh, commands like from your remote uh, controller for instance or you could use also um, radio commands from your garage door stuff like that so you can record them all here and then you could play them back using their app oh, that's nice. um, what's else yeah this is the raspberry pi 400 i also get it recently i haven't had time to uh, set it up okay. and uh, yeah and yeah these here are some dongles actually that are used for uh, what we called SDR, which is software defined radio. So these are actually been using to, you know, to um, capture uh, the digital TV on your computer. So use them with the, their antenna actually, and you can watch TV on your computer. Um, but the, compu the community actually, they, <laughs> they, they, they hij hijacked them and they built software because they have like a some uh, like an interesting uh, chipset which is called the R8202 um, uh, chipset and actually you can use they they're, they're been using it to uh, capture any like a wide variety actually of uh, frequencies uh, where you could, for instance, use them to sniff uh, frequencies from your garage doors or your uh, maybe curtains or even some surveillance cameras, actually. Um, so, of course, I mean, the data is encrypted, but then you could see uh, all kind of communications in uh, a particular uh, frequency range. Okay. Um, and this, this actually an antenna I, I built uh, with the help of my wife. She's actually an antenna designer. So oh, she helped me to build a specific antenna to uh, be able to uh, capture all the uh, data that is broad, uh, broadcasted by planes, by airplanes around our house uh, in terms of ADSB, uh, which is like some surveillance. There, there's a huge community actually uh, using that. Um, yeah, basically that's that's all. All the other instruments are living there in the box. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with that. So yeah, just let collection. <laughs> oh. So for those of you that you you joined us recently, uh, you can use our hashtag uh, Dev Show and let us know that what is your favorite uh, IoT device and if you have built anything with that yet. So let us know. And then three, uh, three of you are going to get a special prize from us this time. That's a great gift, actually. <laughs> so uh, let's get us started right. to find out how you casually make your coffee every day. <laughs> Well, actually, I mean, to be honest, I just like press the button. It's much easier, easier for me. That's cheating, Vasim, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, you need really to concentrate in order to you know trigger any particular command, uh, which is, by the way, we are probably not going to do live demo today, uh, since I'm like 
stressed with the with the with the with the talk. Um, but otherwise, uh, actually, Sherry, there's a there's a video. Yes, can, I have can a video. You, can you play it first? Yes, I mean, before let's, we start. Let's play that one. Um, Thank you. So the video is also available on, on my Twitter account if you want to see it live. Yeah, and we will also share the link in the follow-up yep. with you guys. So <clears throat> we make sure that you can see it. So, so as you can see here, actually, um, to be honest, I tried this like three times uh, because uh, the first two times it was taking too long actually to trigger the command. like maybe like 10 minutes. And that's why it works. Actually, the third time it was really shorter because I was already focused, <laughs> you know, <laughs> concentrated like, um, but yeah, I mean, and um, like today I'm gonna walk you through actually how I managed to do this and, you know, just demystify all the uh, uh, technologies that are used under the hood. Great. So for and this, yeah, I've prepared a couple of slides just to, you know, to guide me. They are not meant to be shared, but just like for me in order to uh, uh, I'm have going like, to you know, screen now. yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I So, so just I before you. you jump into this, I was actually expecting that you had the, had your uh, notion lying on your night table and then you put it on before you get out to bed and then boom, your coffee were ready, right? Yes. <laughs> you could do that actually. That's, that's one of the use cases. And and to be honest, I mean, I'm using here. I'm using the coffee machine as a fun project. But you can imagine other more interesting use cases. You know, for probably people with disabilities or you know, um, I, mean, I mean, this project like it's it's and that's what I um, I've mentioned in video. It's a proof of concept. I mean, you could use it mm -hmm. just to see that actually it's working. Um, you probably need more concentration. You need probably the hardware. You probably need some software. Um, but it's working. We have something that actually we can build uh, on top of it. So as you can see here, actually, I tweeted about this um, last month, uh, November 25th. And I've been working on it for like a week before that. And to be honest, and I, that's what I'm going to mention during the slides, like 80% of this project was spent on the coffee machine, not the headset. <laughs> I was like trying to understand how, you know, trying to reverse engineer the protocol and uh, see how I can control the coffee machine without the app that I that I, they are uh, providing actually. Um, yeah, so yeah, tweeted about this, about this and um, people seem to, to uh, enjoy the experience. <clears throat> So this actually was a video. And yeah, before we start, uh, so I did this for my personal use case and uh, my personal learning just for like an educational purposes. Please don't do this at home. Or if you do it, do it on your own hardware. Don't reverse engineer a hardware that you don't own. Um, and yeah, um, be responsible. <laughs> So this is the machine I'm, uh, I have. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention the brand, but you can see it on the screen. It has actually lots of like 24 or 20 plus beverage types, like hot water, tea, coffee, chocolate, hot chocolate, lots of stuff. Um, and I mean, you could. I, I bought it actually because I wanted to brew my own coffee. So there has a it has a. Um, um, some room behind where you could put your coffee uh, grains and then actually you can brew it. And yes, it's a, it's a smart coffee machine, which means basically support Bluetooth. <laughs> it has, I mean, we're not gonna talk about what smart is, but it basically has a Bluetooth chipset and the, um, 
they have uh, this application, this mobile app, where you could like prepare your beverage and then start your beverage. And you could also like you know control some settings like the cup light or um, turn it on or trigger the um, um, you know change time stuff like that. So yeah, basically this app is using Bluetooth to communicate with the machine. And to be more precise, it's using Bluetooth low energy, which is a different protocol than the common Bluetooth. Uh, it's also known as a smart Bluetooth or a Bluetooth 4 or 5 plus, something like that. But yeah, basically, um, it's, it's like it's connecting to the app, sending some specific commands, and um, and yeah, and the the, app, the 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 machine basically reacts to those commands. So the first part of this project was to actually to try and understand how the app is controlling the machine. So the app was actually our entry point to this whole experience because. Um, I mean, I tried actually to extract the firmware from the coffee machine, but I couldn't uh, because first of all, the machine was still uh, on warranty, so I didn't want to void warranty. <laughs> and I don't know if it's legal or legal to extract the firmware. Um, the com I mean, the company, they, they don't provide the firmware. Um, anyways, that was not an option for me uh, because I still wanted to you know, brew my coffee. <laughs> Um, so the other the other entry point was the the Bluetooth, you know, uh, from the app. So if you ever wanted actually to start with this Bluetooth low energy ecosystem, you actually need this application. It's made by Nordic um, semiconductors. Semiconductor, excuse me. It's called NRF Connect for Mobile, and it's basically a, you know a Bluetooth sniffer, logger, whatever you want for your mobile. Um, like you, you, you start the app. It uses obviously your Bluetooth, and you know it scans all the Bluetooth devices that you have around you. Um, and then uh, you connect to a device, and you can actually inspect all the uh, um, characteristics and services. That's actually something I didn't mention in my previous slide. So this Bluetooth Bluetooth low energy protocol. Um, you could, by the way, read the specs online. That's why I didn't uh, mention, you know, how how it works. They have the like, specifications over uh, Bluetooth.com, I think. So there is like there is a client, there is a server, and then the client connects to the server, and the server then uh, exposes some services. And for each services, there are characteristics that you can read from or or um, write to. Uh, and then there is also like some sort of notifications that you can subscribe in order for the server to send you back uh, like st a stream of responses. So um, these are like basically the things that you need to be familiar with in order to start, you know, hacking with Bluetooth. So this application shows you actually what are the services that are exposed by the ser by the, the device, and for each service. What are the characteristics? And also, you can even like from the app um, subscribe to the notif notifications, enable indicators, uh, read a value, or send a value. However, you need to understand what value actually you need to write. Or if you're reading data, you are getting actually like bytes, and there is no more information about this. So you're probably getting like some hexa values, and you don't know what they are. So uh, one thing you would probably do, and I really recommend because otherwise you will be just reinventing the wheel. Uh, whatever like you get the service U UID, um, try to like Google it or Bing it, and like search if there are <laughs> another person on the other side of the world actually who already did the project or someone like extracted some information about this particular service. Uh, you probably have some you know some resources there that you can use. Maybe like a GitHub library, like a GitHub project library, or at least like some uh, papers that you can read. So for this particular project uh, by the brand I'm using, I found actually some like a PhD papers from someone who used this uh, kind of same thing, but for a different model, uh, which basically doesn't work on this one. 
So that's why I had to do my own. <laughs> um, and also the service UID and characteristics UID are something that are really tied to a chipset. So this is actually the one of the results that I got from Google here. Um, this service tells me that actually it belongs to a microchip made by a company called Microchip, excuse me. And the, the microchip is the RN4020 um, LDP. And you don't care, you don't need to know, understand uh, what they mean. It actually just, you could download the data sheet and just, you know, uh, you won't really actually need this, but it's really helpful if, for instance, you come across a problem or an issue or are getting errors. If you know how the chip is working or what the, like the requirements or the stuff for the chip, um, it would help. Uh, for instance, there are some devices that, you know, when you connect to a device, you can't read directly. Actually, you need to enable some flags or some options before reading. And this is all actually explained in these kind of uh, data sheets from the, um, the manufacturers. So uh, for my coffee machine, it happens to be using this chipset from Microchip. And, um, and yeah, I had a lot of read there in order to understand what are the services exposed and everything. And, and also, I mean, these papers have a lot of information. You might probably don't need all of this. But again, it just gives you a gist of how uh, the manufacturer actually is implementing this in your coffee machine. So the next step would be to uh, enable um, Bluetooth login on your um, phone. Here I'm using Android. So remember, when you're using your app made by your, the, the, you know, the coffee manufacturer that connects your coffee machine and you know trigger beverage and everything. So it's it's sending Bluetooth packets and it's receiving Bluetooth packets. So in order for you, the developer to log all these packets, you need to enable this option on your uh, Android developer options. And um, then you need to extract those logs and inspect them. So the next step would be to extract the these logs, the HCI logs. So in previous version of Android, it was easy to do. There, was, <laughs> there, there, there were a single file that you could just pull from your device. But with the recent Android versions, it things change. So, I had to make this script actually to automate this, uh, the process. But at the end, actually, we'd get a file, a like log file. And this log file, we'd use it and feed it into a tool called Wireshark, which is a uh, basically a software that you could use to inspect um, network packets or Bluetooth packets or any kind of packets, actually, UDP, TCP, and, and I, I guess many, many more. I'm not an expert in that particular tool. I just used it and then Googled actually how it works in order to get my information. So here I opened this HCI logs that I got from my phone inside Wireshark and it has lots of information. Um, this here, the protocol that I'm highlighting is the ATT, which is the like accessing the attributes from a certain characteristic on my device. And basically, um, <clears throat> Here is like my computer is talking. I mean, excuse me. The mobile phone is talking to the machine, and it's sending the value that is highlighted um, here, which is zero D zero five, uh, and and the rest of the the hex values. And um, as you can see here in the scroll bar, there are lots and lots and lots of <laughs> logs that you need to go through. So. What you usually do is like you use your phone, you send one particular command, which you know what it does actually, for instance, like turning on the machine or like serving a particular particular beverage. And then uh, use to um, you use these logs actually to like understand, okay, when I press this button, this is actually these are the packets that went, you know, uh, over, over the over the network. Um, some of this information you can get it from the Anarf uh, mobile, like Connect Mobile app on your phone. Um, but for our here, for our use case, because this, uh, so that's something I discovered actually. The mobile app, when it connects to the coffee machine, it it creates some sort of like of a heartbeat. You know, it's pinging the machine every five seconds, 
And this is something that is more like cumbersome to get from the NRF mobile app. Uh, but you could clearly see it here. I mean, if you scroll up and down in this file, you could see like a lot of similar packets going to the coffee machine and responses coming back from the machine. And then uh, you will have to do this for everything. I mean, <laughs> it took me like more actually than a week to try to understand. Uh, you know, when I click on a button, what are the packets that are sent? You know, so I had to basically do it for everything, like for triggering, you know, the 24 plus beverages I have. Some of them actually are disabled from the, um, the um, mobile app. For instance, you can't uh, serve tea from the app. You need to do it like mm. physically. Da, it's so like 2020, you know. <laughs> um, I assume you had a lot of fun in in this section and can you tell well, us that how many coffees you actually brewed while you were i mean i i i drank a lot of lot of coffees actually because at this particular time i didn't i mean i couldn't figure out you know the stop command because once you trigger beverage you need to you know wait for it until it's served but then i figured actually you can stop you know you can like when you send a uh, like uh, the trigger uh command if you want to like, cancel it, you can just stop, make a stop command. Ah, okay. So uh, yeah, once I <laughs> figure out how to stop the, the, the you know the 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 coffee serving uh, commands, um, that was easy for me. But then yeah, I had to drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> but I mean, I love coffee. That's why I have a coffee machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why it only took one week. If you didn't get the coffee, it was was any any other divide. Maybe maybe it took two weeks, right? So exactly. <laughs> And, um, and but then, yeah, I uh, eventually managed to uh, decode some of the commands. I'm still actually working on it as a you know a side plus 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 project. <laughs> and these are some of the commands from the settings. For instance, you know uh, you can control the water hardness if you want. You can turn on, turn off the cup warmer or cup lights, saving mode, even the beep on your. Uh, the coffee screen and also and obviously <laughs> the uh, packets that you that are used to trigger a uh, particular particular beverage and i'm not going actually uh in detail and, and explaining which um what is the role of each packet uh that's something actually um i'm doing as part of an open source project called cafe so c a f y on my git i just checked my github was him that dev so uh, everything actually I'm working on right now for this coffee machine is open source already. Uh, obviously, it's not working. And obviously, it's only for this particular brand and this particular model, as I you know explained earlier, because of the chipset they're using, because of the uh, protocol and they're implementing. But you only need to know that like you know the first packet, like zero, uh, the first byte, zero D, is a special byte, and the uh, uh, the last two bytes, like for instance, uh, 70, 77FF for the first one are uh, checksums. Like they used to uh, like sign actually the, the whole packet. And these are, they are, this is, these are used by the machine actually to make sure that the packet it receives is uh, well, like well formed and it's not corrupted. And all the bytes in between are, you know, for pro profiles, um, uh, you know, for coffee, uh, how do you call it? Like uh, the amount of coffee you want in your cup, the amount of water, all the stuff. And these are the magic stop commands for each beverage <laughs> that you need, uh, you know, to have, you know, when you're hacking on a machine, you need to have them. Otherwise, you would just like trigger a command and just go and then stop it manually on the, on the, on the machine, which is fun as well. Um, optionally, actually, you could, I mean, you could do all of this just using your computer and like a, and che like cheap, um, Bluetooth, um, dongle or chipset. But if you want like more advanced tooling, you can get this one, the Ubertooth one, which also works on Wi-Fi. Um, it's like, uh, 2.5 gigahertz and Bluetooth and other protocols, I guess. Uh, and this one is by Nordic, uh, I, I, I don't know if I said before, but I love Nordic. They make really good, great, like great tools. Um, so 
yeah, this one is also really great if you want to hack on Bluetooth. And by, when I say hack, it means having fun, you know, not like bad hackers, like good hackers. <laughs> like try to understand how things work. That's actually the original term of hacking. And and by no means I'm like have have like zero experience in security stuff or <laughs> I'm just like googling stuff and like learning. Um, so that's that was the first part for the machine, like trying to understand how it works. And actually, at this point, I mean, uh, controlling the coffee machine with your brain, you only just needed to understand to know what is the packet for one coffee because that's that's the proof of concept. Uh, I'm not gonna like serve the 24 beverages from my head you know <laughs> uh, if it works for one it's gonna work for the other other ones so now yeah introducing uh, the neurosity notion too which has happened to have on my head right now so it's a it's a device um, um, it's what we call actually a brain computer interface it's um, and again um, I'm not a, like a doctor or a scientific or whatever I'm just a you know, average developer. So I don't know about all the medical stuff that's happening here. Uh, but I know they have a JavaScript API. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's more important thing, yeah. They have Node and JavaScript. And actually, it has like a, a computer inside uh, behind here. Uh, yeah, one point gigahertz, uh, eight gigabytes of flash, two hours of battery. And it also supports eight channels of um, EEG. And yeah, and you can hook it up actually to uh, other uh, streaming layers, uh, protocols like the one I mentioned here, MATLAB's, uh, or uh, uh, you can use also SDKs from other um, companies or other like open source project in different languages. But yeah, the, the Neurosity folks, uh, they are providing, they have provided actually a Node.js SDK and also a browser SDK. And yeah, you can use it to, actually I didn't say what, <laughs> you can use it. I think it's, it's used to analyze the frequencies that are triggered or like, um, dispatched by your brain, like, you know, by created by your brain. Um, and this device actually captures those frequencies and provide them to us in a, like a more user-friendly manner. You know, they abstract in all the scientific paper, all the scientific stuff and medical uh, technology stuff, and which is great for us developers. And then you can capture like things like how calm you are, how focused you are, and they have also this kinesis um, capabilities where you actually can train the device on a particular um, thought. And then they're basically creating a machine learning model. And then you could use that later on to predict for, that's what I actually I used for the coffee machine. So I trained, I don't know if I have a, no, I have it. So I trained the, um, the headset on my, brain it's like it's personal because every brain is different every brain like triggers different i mean they, they obviously trigger the same frequencies but at different levels um so i yeah trained this uh model on my head and i used that they have like a uh, fixed set of models that you could use so i used the um, left index finger i think um because why? Because that was the like the simplest model that worked on my brain. <laughs> I tried my right one, but it was like really um, it has like low activities, and I had like I had difficulties yeah. triggering. Excuse me. I have one question here. When you say that you you kind of that you you train the model, yes. So so then um, how exactly do you do that? So is there something like an uh, it comes with the with the Neurocity app that you try to do it there. Yeah, so I'm actually they have a console, they have a web console that you can connect to. Uh, one like when you get a device, you like you register the device with this console, and as you can see now, it's capturing live my data. Okay. And then you go to the training session here. You create a new training, and these are the fixed um, models they have. Like for instance, left thumb finger. Uh, mental math, move backward, forward, move left, all the stuff. And then what, like, like 
let's start this one for instance and we're not going you know to go over all the whole training so they ask you to rest and then they ask you to think you are moving left so now you will stop and think and then rest so you're not actually moving you're just thinking about no moving. just yeah just think think you're yeah. moving left yeah. but i mean it's difficult because i want to move left you know but i can't <laughs> <laughs> And then you have like 30 steps like this. You need at least 15 in order for the model to work. But it's easy, it's good if you go uh, through the 30th um, steps. I mean the 30 okay. steps. Um, and then, yeah, you create your uh, actual uh, machine learning models there. And then you use JavaScript, JavaScript SDK to access those predictions. And then once the prediction happens, you trigger anything, actually. So um, I was saying they have a JavaScript API. And for our use case, uh, we actually needed to replace the mobile app, the Bluetooth mobile app, with this headset. However, the headset is talking with Wi-Fi. So uh, it's connecting with Wi-Fi over Wi-Fi through um, you know, through the cloud console, but by, by the way, you can disable this. You can just connect directly to the uh, to your computer. Um, and then from the, the from the computer here, I'm using the Raspberry Pi in my slide. So the actually the Raspberry Pi is communicating over uh, Bluetooth with the coffee machine. Uh, I, is that is that is that okay? Yeah, I like to have just <laughs> added like an extra layer here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm using my headset and thinking about that actual, you know, left finger uh, movement. And once the movement is the predicted by the device, I get that actually uh, inside my code. And I'm simply like translating that action into an actual a command for the coffee machine. So yeah, that's the console I showed you earlier. And this is basically the code snippet that I use. I mean, no, not snippet, this is the whole code I used actually to control the coffee machine. And of course, I mean, um, here the command that's, that is uh, sent to the coffee machine is, you know, that's the library I'm building right now. So <laughs> this API here is abstracting a lot of, lot of code behind. Um, but otherwise, as you can see here, for the Notion API, it's really simple. Like, if you like remove you now all the syntactic sugar, whatever, you could just like do it under like ten or fifteen lines of code. And here, as you can see, I'm accessing the Kinesis API. I'm asking for the left index finger prediction, and it is an observable API, so you can subscribe to it and get a stream, like a live stream, kind of live, like two minute seconds delay, but it's it's, it's a sky for us. And here I'm just like using a workaround, like I'm introducing this um, confirmation threshold max, which is my own way of saying, okay, I need to be, because once, because <laughs> I mean, you're receiving like a stream of data, like lots of stream in, in one second. So you don't want to like actually send multiple commands to the coffee machine, otherwise things gonna get worse, you know? I'm just kidding, because like the machine would just ignore the rest, but just like trying to, you know, not overload my Bluetooth um, device. So I'm just like introducing this protection here in my code. Uh, but actually, I mean, if you are doing another uh, use case, you could probably remove that part. Um, that, I mean, yeah, that, that's basically it. Uh, all the rest is, you know, your imagination and creativity. So. Um, I don't know if we have time actually to show any demo because we're already 45 minutes. Um, we do have time. So so just before going into the demo, I, I was just going to ask one question. So so you, you showed us a full process of how you, you attacked this. Uh, but but basically, you could use this with, with any uh, Bluetooth device, not only the coffee machine, right? So so the whole process would be based basically if 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 Sherry wanted to to control her Tesla with the uh, with your uh, head, uh, set, I maybe. I don't I I'm I don't have a Tesla, so I don't know which protocol they have there, but I mean this this would easily easily work with a Bluetooth low energy device. Mm. Okay. Uh, because, like, for different reasons, one of them is they have less security. Actually, 
this protocol support like less security. That's why the manufacturers, they are trying to have their own protocol actually over Bluetooth um, in order you know, in order to encrypt or whatever they do for that data. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, um, I have two more next projects for the coming week, actually. One of them is my Christmas tree behind, which is have a Bluetooth LED LED strip, you know? And also have my um, <laughs> BB-8. <laughs> ah. um, yep. Yeah. So this guy here is Bluetooth enabled. Um, and then actually uh, the same process, you sniff all the packets, the Bluetooth packets, and then try to replay them, you know, using uh, this like Wireshark to decode. Um, I mean, there are two level actually two levels of uh, abstractions here, of uh, or I would say two levels of, of of difficulties. You could just sniff the packets, and then if you want to just play them as as it is, I mean, raw, or otherwise, I mean, if you want to get advanced, you could build your own code and try to recreate those commands if you want. Uh, for instance, I mean. This guy here can can obviously move forward, backwards, and turn around. Like they, it has a set a specific set of commands. Uh, however, like the coffee machine, as I showed you in one of the um, slides, when trying to serve like a, a beverage, there are lots of bytes here actually that control you know the level of coffee, the level of water, and all the stuff. So if you wanna like build a UI, let's say like build a web app that allows you actually to choose the, quant the quantity of water, the, 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 the coffee, all the stuff, then actually you need to understand how to create those packets because you're not going to, um, uh, you're not going to uh, decode the, all of the combinations actually that exist. Uh, it's gonna take a lot you know, lots of time. So that's actually what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to understand what is the role of each packet here that is sent? <laughs> so uh, I can recreate them easily, you know, in, instead of like trying to uh, intercept the, I don't know, like 35 different combinations of this specific command. Only for the simple coffee. I'm not talking about Doppio, Americano, Coffee Long, all the others. So yeah, there are like two levels. Uh, if you wanna just like, Capture and then like re replay back. That's easy. I mean, you could with the same tools. I mean, you can just replay them. Otherwise, if you want to like go deeper and understand how the protocol works, then it's gonna take some time and take some trials and lots of errors. <laughs> and also, um, you know, if 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 the if the if the um, the app is like introduce introducing some custom encryption, whatever, it's gonna be really challenging. Um, but as I mean, as I say, anything that has a transistor is eventually hackable. So, <laughs> and like hackable again in a good term. No. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good explanation. But yeah, I mean, today there are lots of IoT devices out there uh, that you can buy that are already Bluetooth enabled. So basically, everything that is prefixed with smart <laughs> that means I either Wi-Fi. Has the Bluetooth? So Which one? My toothbrush has a Bluetooth. Exactly. Well. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like, no, why would you hack? A <laughs> yep. <laughs> so if you have like devices like I have the Elgato here in front of me, so they already have a Wi-Fi API, so that's perfect. There is nothing to do actually. Just like access the the API and like try to connect to them. But all you know, all the small candles that you buy that are that are, they are Bluetooth, and it makes yeah, things true. difficult. But it's not harder. Right? It's not. I mean, you could totally do it. It's gonna take some time, but you could totally do it. I also know that you have a smart desk. Smart desk, yes. But <laughs> it's um, yeah. I wrote about this uh, <laughs> last two, like last year. Yeah, yeah. It's a standing desk that has a. Well, that had a con uh, like a remote control, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> which is now is like empty, and uh, yeah, I mean, just basically um, did some like um, 
low level uh, electronics like 101 stuff you know with some uh transistors in order to uh, emulate you know a um trigger mm -hmm. on on the on the different buttons and then use actually one of the onions omega uh, chipset i showed you earlier mm -hmm. because like i wanted to expose an api i mean a server directly from the uh, desk controller yeah. so Everything I'm saying actually is, is available on a blog post. I, I can share it back if you um, if you want afterwards. And then, yeah, I mean, then you could control your desk with an API. And once you have an API, there is no limitation. I mean, you can control the API with whatever you want. I can even use it with my head. I can, I built actually a different app recently using the same thing, using a, an app called uh, Lobe.ai, which basically analyze my poster you know when i'm sitting down or standing using uh, my camera yes so the yeah. actually the desk would react like would if i'm up if i'm like i'm standing up the desk would rise to a different like a specific uh preset and yeah, yeah when, once i'm sitting down the desk would then <laughs> uh That's go back to preset one yeah i was i was uh, i wanted to say that you can think of a standing up and your desk comes up but if it's there is a camera that it detects that's even easier <laughs> so. yeah i mean it's a camera and like you know for for privacy and stuff you know, like it's it's a local computer to your machine like a raspberry on your desk with like mm -hmm. zero connection uh but again i mean the the the, the difficult actually the difficulty with the headset uh, it's not the headset itself the headset i'll make it a great device it captures the signals from your brain the problem is your brain. <laughs> the problem is my brain. I guess, like it's 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 super active brain. So I'm thinking about so many stuff at the same time, and it's really hard like to like, focus on one particular topic. And like so, <laughs> <laughs> that that I mean that's for me actually the, the most difficult is to really try to focus. <laughs> yeah. Try to uh, focus, you know. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, I mean. If you, if you, if, I mean, if you know your brain, <laughs> if you know it well, I mean, the device would would be really great to help you focus. Uh, they have like I didn't mention, but actually, they have a VS Code extension that you could use to help you. you no, know, that shows you your uh, focus um, ah, cool. prediction and and uh, score. Mm -hmm. And I think Alex also showed. Um, so Alex, one of the founders, he showed on his Twitter a, a demo where actually he could turn turn off. The notifications from um, the operating system from Mac OS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if like if the headset detects that he's out of focus. <laughs> it was actually here. I don't know if it's still here or not. And he mentioned that you are. Oh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey Alex. And I said I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, he made a super cool demos uh, on his on his Twitter account. Uh, yes, I remember from them them out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't know if we can risk uh, doing a demo here, uh, but I, I can try. It might not work, yeah, let's, but let's I can try. try. We have a few minutes. So yeah, the coffee machine is turned on. Um, so I could probably just show you first the code, which is basically the same code I showed, showed you earlier. It's like really, uh, like nothing, uh, really, really, uh, fancy. So here, the code is much bigger because I'm using uh, the um, Aura package, you know, for just like for uh, showing some uh, logs and interactive login and everything. But it's, you know, it's not part of the uh, logic. So um, let me get back here and as again, as I said, risk to, <laughs> to do a, a demo. Yeah. Where is uh, VS? Uh, okay, it's here. So I'm gonna run this command, and then uh, the th what, what's gonna happen here is um, the uh, the code is gonna request access to my device. So I have my login and username in my in here in my code. So it's gonna try to connect actually over the um, cloud console to my device in order to you know read all the data, and then I'm gonna specifically read the kinesis training that i told you about earlier and once i have a prediction over which is um 
you know, over uh, 80% here. Actually, I'm gonna use it to compute my threshold, my confirmation threshold in order to make sure that I am really thinking about my, you know, in order to eliminate some errors. And um, if the confirmation holds stable for a, some, you know, amount of iterations, then I confirm the action, which is sending the, the coffee uh, thing. And by the way, actually, um, Cherry, if you can also, Oh, okay, so my my other phone died actually. So you won't you won't <laughs> you won't see the coffee. Uh, otherwise, you yeah, could... I know I noticed actually. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> you would okay. hear it because it's loud, so you would hear it brewing the uh, the coffee. All right, so let's start. NPM start. So um, I need to be focused. Oh, can you hear? <laughs> so it's brewing, huh? <laughs> That's amazing. That's a uh, well done. It works. I'm so happy it works actually. <laughs> <laughs> it went fast. Yes. All right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I have oh, <laughs> now I want coffee. <laughs> Amazing. I have to drink it. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, mine doesn't have a Bluetooth, so it's a it's as well as make is. So I good. have I have something for you. Ah, that's good. <laughs> You need to get this device the, uh, from SwitchBot I told you about. Yes. Okay. So it's it's I mean you can use, it's Bluetooth it's connected to your app and then actually it's like a um, if like a, like a finger like a mechanical finger <laughs> you can use it actually to trigger any button actually you like stick it uh -huh. here over uh, let's say you have a remote control yeah. stick it on the remote and then whenever you on your um, app like it triggered the action then, then this thing actually would click would like really uh push your button like ah. physically i mean okay Let's so yeah uh, if you have like no smart coffee machine <laughs> <laughs> these these things are really um simpler to use actually so this is like rpa robotic automation <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean they, they, they do only one thing but they do it well mm. <laughs> Yeah, but then you just need a series of them, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's great actually because I'm already like ordering five of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We have awesome. Few people in the in the chat also yeah. they they are happy that that you had your your coffee brew. So. Yep. Um. And by the way, uh, shout out to my friends from Madrid. Yay. Yeah, we see it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, this, in Madrid. Uh, it's from Starbucks Madrid, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's from Starbucks Madrid. Yeah, so the, the thing is, yeah, it's what, yeah, I saw a question there. It was pretty quick. That's because actually I trained a lot on a lot on a lot of data around that specific kinesis. And that's also a great thing about machine learning. And also, uh, actually, to be honest, I don't know how the Nora City folks is doing, are doing the stuff there, but it's, I mean, it's really great. We're working great. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as you have like, you know, uh, a lot of data. And actually, uh, when you have your headset uh, on, so it's um, <clears throat> trying to capture live your data, uh, you know, in order to see if you're calm or um, out of focus and everything. But it also, um, I guess maybe Alex would <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. This probably this data is also used in order to really understand how your brain works, like how the emission of the frequencies and everything actually, um, I guess. And uh, so this will also help if you keep your headset, um, like not always, but a long time on your on your head, you know. And I'm trying, I I, trying to do it. 
so <laughs> you ordered yeah you ordered yours yeah yeah um, so so i i let's see that if i can also make something with it yep. <laughs> with so, yeah i if if some folks wanna wanna um, order the maybe probably the next batch batch because i think that that batch is already done uh yeah i could probably give them a discount like because like courtesy from the narcity folks so 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 contact <laughs> Was seen. <laughs> yeah, just reach me out on on Twitter and. Um, yeah, that that's pretty cool. Um, um, okay. We are almost out of time. Yeah, and with a successful demo, then it's also a good time to to end, right? So uh, <laughs> I think we we just have a, a final some final uh, housekeepings to to tell the audience about. But uh, Wasim, it was yeah amazing to thank you to for having me folks and wow. even with a successful demo at the end that was, uh, that was and we also have some um yeah I, I will tell you in in a few minutes just wait we also have something for you wasim uh, yes so yeah so the dog or uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're gonna get a new dog <laughs> <laughs> no, I think oh, we'll share that afterwards. No. <laughs> I have a cat, yeah. <laughs> but but we would like everyone's feedback, both for this session, but also for the show in general. As you know, we are building the lineup for 2021, as this is the last session in 2020. So uh, so go in and give us your feedback, both via this QR code, which is referring to a Microsoft Forms. Also, if you're using our hashtag, you can use the chat here. Please give us any feedback. Also, tell us what you want to hear in the future. We really appreciate it. This is your show, so we want to build what you want to see. And we also randomly pick um, someone every time that when you give us feedback to get something from us. And we, we have a section for that to tell us that how you uh, how we can contact you when you uh, if you win. So, <laughs> And uh, the other thing is as the usual, we have an Azure Heroes Learner Bash for, for all of you. So you can just scan this QR code and then follow the instruction to get it. And this is one of our, our badges, which is called Learner. That means that you learn something. Congratulations. And when you collect these ones later on, you can swap it with some swags as well when we hmm. get back to the, um, to the normal days. And we have more badges uh, than uh, than a learner badge. And one of them is uh, called open sourcer. When you are contributing to open source, and and we've seen that's also this is one of the uh, gifts from us to you is that you Thank get you. an open sourcer badge. Also, we have another badge which is called maker for the makers. Ooh. And these two badges, one of our uh, very valuable badges, and you get the maker badge as well because definitely you showed us that you are a maker. Awesome. So, Thank you so much. Yeah, but you can all go and uh, to that URL and nominate yourself for some of these badger or some of your friends in from the community. You can you can do that, and you can also add yourself to this uh, this map that we have and. Um, once you get one of these badger and also see others around you or connect to other makers in different countries, maybe, or open sources or uh, green developers. So yeah, go on and check that one as well. And our upcoming events for Smooth. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a non dev show events, but still super interesting. So explore the, the new features in C++9 by Brew Fragments. And also the 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve in Denmark, at least, uh, the Maker Show uh, with you, Sherry. So mm -hmm. IoT-powered holiday lights. So that's actually maybe also something you want to see, Vasim, if you want inspiration for your <laughs> yeah. light for your Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I already have one behind me, so it's already yeah. ready. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, for everybody, check out the the lineup as it begins to show up on on our main meetup page. Uh, we will add them uh, over the coming weeks uh, for at least uh, the first couple of months in 2021. Yeah, and and we have also since we are speaking of uh, IoT, there is also this uh, this uh, this show all around uh, Azure 
focus on on a guide to IoT on January 19th. So you can you can go and and check it out if you're interested in IoT. This is also uh, an event for you. And if you want to talk to us, the best way uh, to do it is on Twitter. And both of us, we have our uh, DM open as well. And uh, I have so, yeah. all the all the um, slides and everything and the code uh, for uh, from uh, Wasim. And we are going to show that, I mean, we are going to share it uh, with you all. Uh, with a follow-up yeah. email that I'm going to send it to you. Sure. And if there's any other questions actually about this specific topic, please reach out to me on, on Twitter. Um, my DMs are also open. You don't have to follow me if you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy. I can give you more details about all the stuff. So with that, thanks for joining the Dev Show, Wasim. Thanks to Thank all the viewers and listeners here. So we appreciate it. Have a fantastic end of the year everyone and see yeah. you in the new year see you next year bye-bye <laughs>